What's up? Welcome back. It's tag time. I'm PC Scott or Pastor Carol, if you like. Thanks for taking this time to come out and watch this. Going to get together for just a few moments. So we can talk a little bit about God's word and how we can and should respond to him. How we can live our lives to please Jesus and how we can move forward as believers in this culture. All those things are wrapped up in all the stuff we do at TAG for our youth ministry. So if you're here for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. For the rest of you, welcome back. Super glad to have you. Before we get into the word, a couple quick reminders, and that is don't forget to be on our list so that you can get updates, information, and what's ups through our text message system. So if you've not already signed up for that, please send the word TAG, T-A-G-G, to our phone number at 713-903-8533. All right, send the word tag T-A-G-G to that phone number. It puts you on a list. It'll be just a few short text, text messages throughout the week. Not gonna bombard you or anything like that. Don't have a whole lot of information to give you. Uh, just wanna be able to reach out and be able to give you some heads up, some information and stuff like that. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, we're trying to help the channel grow. So please like, subscribe, leave some comments and even share the video. If you have some friends at school, some people around, some cousins, whatever, and you think they benefit from the information, send it to them. Or if you're a grown up and you're watching and you know some young people that need to see it, please send it. So do that stuff. It helps us out as a church, helps us grow, helps us continue to push Jesus throughout our culture, through our social media. All right. Thank you so much. Now, this is kind of part three Still in March, we're still dealing with St. Patrick. We're giving all of March to St. Patrick's celebration. So the last two times we got together, we were talking about St. Patrick. We looked at bitter or better. We were talking about St. Patrick's life and some things that he dealt with in particular. And then last week we had talked about uh, following in the footsteps or following the path of St. Patrick and being able to do what he did. And so he decided to be better, not bitter. He decided to follow God's path for his life. So he wanted, wanted to allow God to uh, dictate and tell him what he was going to do with his life, as should we. And then we're going to pick up with part three. Now, one of the particular things we noticed and learned from St. Patrick is that he gave his life to be a missionary, to go to a foreign land so that he could teach the gospel so that he could teach people about Jesus, about God, about how we can live and how we can be free from uh, Satan's captivity. And so he did that. And one of the things that that brings to our attention then is our need to do that. We too as believers, whether you're going to be a missionary or not, whether you're a little bit shy or not, whether you're good at speaking to a bunch of people at one time, whatever the reason, whatever it is, Whatever situation or category you would put yourself in, you should be a sharer of the gospel. I should be a sharer of the gospel because that's what the Bible tells us, what the Bible teaches us. And so we saw it in St. Patrick's life. He went to Ireland and he was specifically teaching people about God and he gave the rest of his life to do that. And not saying that we should all be missionaries. I'm not saying that we should all leave our country and go some other place and solely teach the gospel. But whatever you do as a profession, whatever you do for the rest of your life, whatever you do while you're in school, we should be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, expanding the body of Christ. Now, as people, we don't like our bodies to expand that much unless we're in the gym making our bodies expand. But we don't like our bodies to expand when we're sitting at the table, if you know what I'm saying. But we want the body of Christ to expand. The bigger the body of Christ, the better. We want... Um, we want the sacrifice of Jesus to be accepted, appreciated by everyone, and we want no one to fall into the tricks and traps that Satan has laid out. So this week, I want to talk particularly about how to share the gospel. We looked at some other very important things. If you didn't watch those videos, go back, click there, watch that video. But these are some things that we also need to do. So as we talk about sharing the gospel, as I talk about being a sharer, I want to equip you, give you the ability on how to share the gospel. Now, we have this great thing on the internet, a search engine, and we can look up there all types of stuff. And if you have access to the internet, you can look up how to share the gospel, how to tell my friends about Jesus, 
How do I witness to people? There's different things you can put in the search bar and you'll get a whole lot of really good information. You might get some information. It's not 100% great, but it's your job to look at information and figure out if it's something that you can apply or not. So I'd encourage you to do that if you want to find some ways to, uh, to do what God has for you to do. But there's a couple of scriptures that I want us to look at as we get into this topic about sharing the gospel. So this week, we're looking at <clears throat> how do I share the gospel. So I want to start in Matthew chapter 28 first. So turn there, turn the pages of your paper Bible, if you still have one of those, or if you have one of those at all. Tap there, swipe there, do whatever you have to do to get to Matthew chapter 28, still focused. Matthew chapter 28, I want to look at verse number 18. We're just going to read the last three verses because this is what sets us up for what's coming next. This is what reminds us that we're supposed to share the gospel, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, verse number 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. This is Jesus after his death, burial, and resurrection. He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Somebody say, all nations. That's you say it. All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. As you are commanded by God in his word to do whatever it is, he wants us to share that. So he tells us very clearly that we're supposed to go and teach all nations. We're supposed to go spread or share the gospel. So I want to look at that again. How do I share the gospel? You don't have to just come up with something on your own. We have um, lots of different things that can teach you, can help you learn how to do that. And we're going to look at some of those right now. So what you want to do when you share the gospel, all right, we're doing it right now. This is how you tell other people about Jesus Christ. This is how uh, one of the things that you can do to help lead people to salvation. All right. And that is to share the gospel. If we look at the word gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, we're going to make it an acronym to make it a little bit easier to remember. Acronym, that's where you take a word and each letter stands for something else, but you can remember it when you remember gospel. So I want to tell you what gospel stands for. And we're going to see how gospel is, the gospel is the good news of, of God. It's the Bible. It's the word of God. And so we have this acronym and it's going to show us how to go from Genesis to Revelation to show the gospel. Now you don't have to show somebody in the Bible Genesis to Revelation but you want to make sure that they understand these points and then you can lead them to salvation. You have to get familiar with them. You need to know them as much as possible. And this is just one way. It's not the only way. It may not be the best way. I know it's not the worst way. I think it's a really good, solid way to help us understand and then share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. All right, so here we go. The G in gospel stands for God created us to be with him. God created us, human beings, people. He created us to be with him. So the G is for God created us to be with him. You'll see that primarily in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. So when we're talking to our friends, we want to let them know that, look, God created us to be with him, and then we're going to walk through all these things. Uh, <clears throat> the next one, the O in gospel, is stands for our sins separate us from God. Our sin separates us from God. We're all born in sin. When Adam and Eve decided to sin in the garden, we can find this sin separation, particularly in Genesis chapter 3. And when they sinned in the garden, that put a wall or a divider up between God and man, because now from that point on, man had a sin nature. And with man having a sin nature, we're separated from God because God has to be separated from sin. So God created us to be with him, but our sin separates us from God. And that takes us to the S in gospel. The S in gospel is sins cannot be removed by good deeds. Some people think if they behave well enough, or if they do some good stuff, that maybe they'll get into heaven. It's not about your good deeds. People who have lived their lives terribly. I mean, they could be murderers. They could be drug dealers. They could be abortionists, whatever. They could be terrible people all their lives. If five seconds before they die, they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They believe it in their heart and they confess it with their mouth, which we're going to talk about at the end. If they do that, they go to heaven when they die. So it's not about the good deeds. It's about accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
So the S in gospel, sins can't be removed by good deeds. You see that all throughout the Old Testament from Genesis 4 through Malachi 4. Constantly, uh, God told people to do things and those things never did deal with and get away with sin, which is why he had to deal with Jesus. Which is why I had to send Jesus Christ. So Genesis 4 to Malachi 4 was like almost the whole Old Testament. We see that our sins can't be removed by good deeds. So G-O-S-P. The P says paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. We're about to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's always a great time to share and to celebrate and to remember it daily. We're going to celebrate that coming up on Resurrection Day. But remembering as we share the gospel, we want people to know that God created us to be with him. Our sin separates us from him. Now, sin can't be dealt with by good deeds. So don't just think that you can go do some nice stuff and get it to heaven. No. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. Jesus was the one who actually paid the price for our sin. The wages of sin is death. And that, that is something that is written in the word and it has to be so. But Jesus paid that price on our behalf. You see that particularly from Matthew chapter 1 through the end of Luke. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke show uh, more specifically how Jesus paid the price for sin when he died and rose again. The E says everyone who trusts in him has eternal life. E, everyone who trusts in him has eternal life. We see that starting in John or throughout John, the book of John in the New Testament. So we're telling people God created us to be with him. Our sins separate us from God. Now, sins can't be uh, washed away by good deeds alone. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. Everyone who trusts in Jesus to have paid the price for their sin will have eternal life. Shows us that in John. And the rest of the gospel is concluded in our last letter, L, which is life starts, life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. Life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. Life with Jesus lasts forever. We'll see that between from Acts through Revelation. So when we understand that life starts now and lasts forever, that means that we accept the price that Jesus paid. We do what God has for us to do to receive our salvation. And then our life starts. In John chapter 10, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So when we are um, not saved, we're living a life of death, if you can imagine. But when we accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that's when life starts and it lasts forever. Life with Jesus is not just something that we have on earth. It's not only something that's reserved for after we live our lives on earth and go to heaven. It starts now and it lasts forever. So the rest of our natural life, as well as our eternal life, will have life with Jesus. So if you can understand that, if you can communicate that simple, quick gospel message, then you can help lead someone to Jesus Christ. You don't have to know all that, but that information is, is, uh, is helpful in teaching us to relay the message. Now, when you're trying to lead someone to salvation, you don't have to give them scripture references you don't have to take them all throughout the Bible and show them all these things. You just want to relate to them that God created us to be with him. Our sins separate us from him. Sins can't be taken away by good deeds. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. Everyone who trusts in Jesus, everyone who trusts in him, will have eternal life. And life starts, life with Jesus starts now and it lasts forever. So that is the gospel message encapsulated in one word and an acronym. And if we can remember that, we can help relay that message to other people. Now, this is how we let people know they need to receive salvation. But there's one other thing that we need to do so that they can receive it. So when you let them know this information, they're like, you know what, that makes sense. I, I feel like um, that's true. And I, I think I need to do what you're telling me to do, which is to become saved. This one part of the Bible we do need to know. This you need to memorize. And this is how you activate their salvation. It's Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10 show us specifically how to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It says, what saith it? Talking about the word of God, the Bible. The word is nigh thee, close to you, even in your mouth and in your heart. 
And that's the word of faith which we preach. We preach God's word of faith. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, say with your mouth, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. He goes on and explains, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So from this point, we tell them that this is what the Bible says to re receive salvation, and you just want to lead them in a simple prayer. A simple prayer that says, God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin. And you have them repeat after you, just like we do it in church. And you, say, you have them say, uh, after you, after they believe that God sent Jesus Christ to die and pay the price for their sins, you say, God, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that God the Father sent Jesus to die for me and that he died and he rose again. Uh, you can be my father now. I'm your child now. In Jesus' name, amen. It doesn't have to be the exact same. We just have to make the confession with our mouth and belief in our heart and we shall be saved. That's it, my friends. Practice that. Get to know that. Understand it. And you'll be sharing your faith effectively with your friends and neighbors in no time. We'll see you next week on PC Scott. Out of here.